Wizard 101 has a 13 year old story, so it's about time we go back to the beginning and remember how far we've come. Welcome to the story so far. Arc 2 follows Morganth, a necromancer who was expelled from Ravenwood. She is attempting to become the Shadow Queen, destroying the spiral and making her the sole ruler. Arc 2 starts in Celestia, one of the lost worlds of the spiral, sunken below the seas by the Storm Titan. The Spiral Geographic Society is trying to recover the world. We are originally tasked with helping find Thurston Plunkett, a friend of Professor Bellstrom and the leader of the expedition. Whilst we are in Celestia, we learn a brand new form of magic, Astral Magic. There are trainers located all over the world. We are tasked to restore the Grand Astrolabe, which will open the Trail of Spheres. To fix the Astrolabe, you need three astral relics, Sun, Star, and Moon. The Star of Celestia is the first relic, which is located in the Stellarium in the District of the Stars. However, to get to the district, we must rebuild the teleporter. The pieces are spread out in the Survey Camp and the Grotto. The second relic, the Moon of Celestia, is in the Lunarium. To get there, again, we have to rebuild the teleporter. However, it is stuck in Storm Riven. To get to Storm Riven, we have to fix the submarine. We take a quick trip to the airship on the islands above Celestia to retrieve the parts. Once we collect all the teleporter pieces in Storm Riven, we find one is broken. The archivist teaches us how to fix it, and we open the teleporter to the Lunarium. The final relic, the Son of Celestia, is in the Solarium. Again, the teleporter is broken, and we need to find the pieces. We get the first few pieces from the Science Center, but the last are in the Crustacean Empire, a brand new empire claiming Celestia's waters as their own. Here, we find the final teleporter piece to the Solarium. We also manage to find Thurston Plunkett, who is negotiating with the Crustaceans. We enter the Solarium and retrieve the Son of Celestia, install it in the Grand Astrolabe and open the Trial of Spheres. Inside the Trial, there are three levels, one correlating to each of the Astral Magics. All contain puzzles and guardians the wizard must beat. We get to the top and come face to face with Morganth. She explains Celestians denied her access to astral magic, so she started the war that was their eventual downfall. She concludes by stating a prophecy. The mirror will break, the horn will call, from the shadows I strike and the skies will fall. We get a message from Professor Falmir telling us that students on an exchange program to Zafaria have gone missing. This leads us on our own adventure to Zafaria. We start by talking to the counsellors of Zafaria to get permission to enter the savannah. Once we get to the savannah, we notice that strange things are happening. Morganth has made her way to Zafaria and is causing chaos all over. We help the tribes of the savannah and rescue a few of the students. They mention that other students were heading to Zamunda. We free the Lion King and clean the waters of the savannah and then head to Zamunda. Zamunda has a problem with its leadership too. We again have to cure the king. After curing the king, he gives us a message to take to the Elephant Queen in Stonetown. We repair the boat and head to Stonetown. The queen's son has been taken along with the students and we are tasked to find him as well. One of the students is being kept in the zoo to be studied. We manage to negotiate her rescue and head to the waterfront in search of the counselor. He has been controlled by Morganth to cause chaos around the world. We raid the Black Palace and destroy the Anchor Stones which have placed a curse on the elephants, thus restoring the Queen's rule. Tim Tim Snake Eye, a face that looks familiar wherever we go in Zafaria, says that the Umbra Queen has taken the Elephant Prince to the Drum Jungle. That's our next stop. Morganth has trapped Coco Smoke Sign, a gorilla witch doctor. We free her and learn that Morganth is headed to the elephant graveyard. We enter the graveyard and find the elephant prince in one of the tombs. There, we find Morganth. She tells us we are too late. She is about to fulfill the first part of the prophecy by breaking the mirror. The elephant prince says she's talking about Mirror Lake. Inside the lake, Morganth offers to teach us more than we can ever know. We learn that she is reclaiming her deck of shadows which Ambrose locked under the lake. The Council of Light was founded by Ambrose and is the best chance we have to stop Morganth. Ambrose sends us to the Emperor of Mushu to learn more. Meanwhile, Morganth returns to Wizard City and confronts Ambrose and Gamma. Ambrose tells us that we need to obtain the Sword of Kings from Avalon as it is the only tool to defeat Morganth's deck of shadows. Finding the sword is quite a challenge. Most of the knights who had the sword at one point have passed it on to another knight. This leads us on a wild goose chase all over the world. However, to make it past the guards blocking off the most important parts of Avalon, we must become a knight. The first step is to become a squire. 
To do this, we simply restore the Shrine of Courage. Then we become an Armager. Again, a simple task, all we have to do is restore the Shrine to Hospitality in Kialion. We are then allowed access to the Wild. We find the third host of the sword, only to find that it has been lost. We learn that it was taken to the Weird by Spectres. To get to the Weird, we must become a Knight Errant. This requires us to defeat the mighty Jabberwock and restore the Shrine of Loyalty. Once entering the Weird, we learn the sword has been given to the Pendragon's Horn soldiers. We find Sir Mallory, who has betrayed Artorias and has claimed the sword for his own. However, the Lady of the Lake stops him from being able to use it. Mallory leads us to Gwendolyn and Dundara to fully learn the sword's power. She says we need to become a full knight to wield the sword. To do this, we bring back a Silver Rose to her, and she knights us. She helps us reassemble the Knights of the Silver Rose. With their support, we head to Avalon Castle. We use the horn to call the knights to battle against the Pendragon's army. We head to Lakeshore to find Lady of the Lake, who is trapped in the Dolores Tower. We learn we have been prophesied to save Avalon. We restore the Shrine of Mercy. Lady of the Lake says there's just one more shrine to restore, which is under the castle. We sneak under the castle into the catacombs. We must head to the other side, a past vision of Avalon, and use the Shrine of Justice before the Pendragon took over Avalon. It is finally time to storm the castle, defeat the Pendragon, reclaim the Sword of Kings, and cure King Artorias. As Tekka is under threat of being destroyed by Shaboba, a comet that Morganth is using to forward her master plan. We receive a message from Pakal Redmask, a mystic who is desperately seeking help for his world. We need to find the two other mystics. The first is Tezcat 3 star. He has fled into the Cenote. However, the way to the Cenote has been blocked off. Once cleared, we find Tezcat and repair his axe. The last mystic is Zaylan Reedwalker, who has been captured by Morganth's agents. Once freed, the mystics want us to find out the extent of Morganth's plan. We get a recommendation from King Axia to explore the pyramids. We find out Morganth is after the Horn of Horakan, which she believes is the horn referenced in the prophecy. We race to the Pyramid of the Stormeye in Salt Meadow Swamp to try and stop Morganth. We learn from the Storm Cayman that one of the King's advisors is working for Morganth. Yakate is the traitor and stole the badge of leadership to allow him access to all the pyramids. Morganth uses the enhanced power of death magic in the Black Sun Pyramid to raise a dark servant to help her on her conquest. We head to the Zoltan Islands to find King Neza, King of the Avians. Morganth's soldiers are swarming all around the forest trying to find Lady Zenzen Seven Star, the king's granddaughter. We head to Alto Alto and find King Neza hiding. However, this leads Morganth to follow us. She confronts the king, seeking access to the Pyramid of Mother Moon. This unfortunately leads to King Neza's death. We seek out the Head of the Sun to find Princess Zenzen. The head reveals a hidden sanctuary where Zenzen is located. We head to the House of Flowers to cleanse ourselves before seeking the Pyramid of Mother Moon. We head to Terra de Brea and make a Pyramid Key. We head into the Pitch Black Lake and reach the Pyramid of Mother Moon. In the pyramid, we meet King Neza once more. Morganth's dark servant pulled him from death to stop us. Unfortunately, again, Morganth has beaten us to the pyramid. However, Neza, after he is cured of shadow, says there is another pyramid located in the floating mountains. We head to the mountains and seek the oracle. She tells us the pyramid is located on the twin giants. Morganth beats us to the pyramid and calls Harakan to open a portal to Shaboba. Morganth flees to Shaboba. We use Storm Cayman's Celestial Bow to shoot us up to Shaboba. We break the mirrors, disrupting Morganth's song. However, once reaching her, she says that we are too late, as Tekka's fate is sealed. She has mastered the magic of Celestia to manipulate the comet. We go up against an old foe, Malastir, who was brought back by Morganth. However, at the end of our fight against him, he gets launched off the comet as parts start to break away. Chrysalis starts with us gathering the Council of Light to reforge the Chrysalis Spiral Key. We then free a burrower named Divin Whiteheart. The burrowers are trying to overthrow the Umbra Queen and her Mentis minions. We learn through Divim's informant that the Umbra Queen is going to destroy the burrower strongholds of Peppergrass Nook and Queen Myrtle Town. We need to head to the Last Wood to warn the burrowers. However, to do that we must go through Mooncliffs, and the only way into it is locked. We obtain the Moon Rune and unlock the gate to Mooncliffs. Divim looks for a tunnel the burrowers made into the last wood. However, the Umbra Queen's forces have collapsed it. We trick the bee guards to let us pass. We get the comb key, which unlocks the gate to the last wood. In our battles, Divim gets stung by the broodmother. We get into the last wood and meet the resistance. We reconnect the two strongholds together after a flood, and we delay the Umbra army at Camp Havoc. We then head to Tyrion Gorge in a plot to destroy Camp Havoc. 
We disrupt the operations at Tyrion Gorge to push back the Umbra Queen's plan to drop Kermie's fire on the burrowers. We hatch some dragonflies and make them suitable for flight. We take control of the banyan tower to allow the burrowers and their dragonflies a safe takeoff. We light a smoke signal and the honeycomb wall gets blown up by the flying burrowers. This allows the burrowers access to Mooncliffs to fight against the bees. We defeat the broodmother and the plague of shadow leaves her. We then storm the eclipse tower. We free the caretakers of the tower from Morgant's control. We learn about shadow magic, a dangerous variation of moon magic. After our success in the tower, we restore Bastion to what it was before the war, a stronghold for light. We make peace between mice, sugar gliders, and bees, and focus all their forces on stopping Morganth. The Bee Queen heals Divim as a sign of peace. The new plan is to storm Fort Rakius to get the dying Starstone, which will help us navigate the Starfall Sea to reach Morganth. We make our way into Fort Rakius, opening the gates to the main keep. We make it into Ghost Dog's den, freeing the mice prisoners on our way. We force our way to Ghost Dog, Morganth's first warlord, and defeat him even after Morganth's tricks and recover the Dying Starstone. With the Dying Starstone, we are able to head to Radiance Reborn and disrupt Morgant's star magic. We head to Crescent Beach and meet Taylor Coleridge, who agrees to help us sail across the Starfall Sea on the Great Beast. We land ashore at the ruined Alcazar, an Alcazar once built to teach and host star magic. Morganth came and couldn't master the magic and destroyed the Alcazar by ripping the stars out of the sky. We find the caretaker of the Alcazar and open a portal to the Star Castle. We are told Morganth learned her shadow powers not here, but in the Solar Arc, which is dedicated to sun magic. We get to enter past visions of the spiral and get brought along on Morganth's journey. First in Avalon, then in Wizard City, and finally here in Chrysalis. Once learning the story of Morganth, we head to the Mantis capital, the Sardonyx, in search of the Solar Arc. We win over the people of the Sardonyx by raising a mystic colossus statue. We free the mantises by storming the palace and defeating Warlord Baylor. We open the gates and head into the Conda Desert. We meet up with Divim once more and find desert hoppers who are able to lead us to the Solar Ark. Once inside, we need to obtain a lens from each school. Once collecting seven lenses, we head into the heart of the Solar Ark and free the caretaker from Morganth's clutches. The caretaker explains Morganth and the spider magi open the Ark to shadow magic, transforming the Ark into a shadowy place. The caretaker, now versed in shadow magic, teaches us some. We make our final approach on Morganth by entering the Hive. We meet Taylor Coleridge once more, and he leads us to the Black Hole. He believes that the bottom of the Black Hole is the only thing that can destroy Morganth. At the bottom, we meet Old Cobb. He leads us through the Hive, straight to the Shadow Palace. We fight the Shadow Tree Moros, and he opens the Celestial Bridge to Morganth's Palace. When we enter, Old Cobb says Morganth has nearly mastered the Song of Creation, meaning we have little time to act. We head into the galleries and free the Lords of Night. After getting through Morganth's Warlords, it is finally time to face off with Morganth. In a last-ditch effort to rewrite the spiral, Morganth sings the Song of Creation, but the power is too strong, and she can't hold all the Shadow Magic. The glass beneath her breaks and she falls into the void. We absorb a lot of the shadow magic as a result of Morgant's defeat. We redirect it back into the world using the Zalos and Rubicon Colossi. Old Cobb then sets his children free to roam the spiral they have missed for a long time. Surely nothing could go wrong.